It's difficult to avoid how ransomware has become a problem for organizations around the world. And one of the reasons ransomware is successful is because organizations who fall victim to ransomware attacks are paying the ransom, despite being told not to by the authorities. So why do organizations pay these ransoms? And what risks does paying the ransom involve? Because sometimes, even if you pay the ransom, it's not necessarily the end of your problems. I'm Danny Palmer. This is ZediNet Security Update. And with me to discuss ransomware attacks and why paying the ransom isn't a good idea is Jonathan Stream Amit, Cyber Reason's co-founder and CTO. Thanks for joining me. So first of all, why do so many organizations pay the ransom when we've had you know, governments and various cybersecurity companies say, do not do this because it just helps the criminals? Hi, Danny. First and foremost, thank you for having me. Uh, we've seen, we've been researching cyber ransomware groups and their activity for many years now, offering solutions for ransomware. And we're seeing in critically emerging patterns, ransomware criminals and are really modern day version of terrorists. They are doing everything they can to force the victim's hand for payment. If a couple of years ago, you were looking at ransomware criminals who were targeting an individual computer, that could be your own or one employee or consumers oftentimes, really holding for ransom pictures and trying to get individuals to pay them. And this had, of course, an impact on business, but not as to anywhere near what we're seeing these days. Over the last couple of years, we're seeing ransomware groups getting more and more sophisticated. Techniques and, and methodology that used to be on the purview of nation states have been very you know, readily adopted by ransomware groups. And now when the ransomware group attacks an organization, they no longer just encrypt one machine. They will go and encrypt every single, any, every single machine, every single server, every single desktop, laptops, and all the data becomes inaccessible. At this point, the victims are really in an impossible situation. If they have not prepped a response ahead of time, they really are facing a disastrous risk. And oftentimes, uh, ran the victims end up resorting to payment. However, we know this doesn't end here. We've seen that in 80% of the cases, those that pay are really painting a target on their back and encouraging, in a sense, ransomware groups to strike again. In 42% of the cases, the same attack group would go and attack the, the victim again after getting the ransom paid. Even more worrisome to some degree, in our survey, we found that 46% of those that ended up paying got the decryption, decryption capabilities, but it had still corrupted either some or all of their files. In the famously known colonial pipeline breach, the one that put down the, you know, the almost the entire Eastern coast uh, oil supply, their decryptor was so slow and operative that Colonial Pipeline ended up resorting to continuing with their old pre-planned disaster recovery and backup system because it was mostly unusable. So we, we at Cyber Reason continuously research those and have discovered with this survey and through extensive research, a lot of these very, very fascinating facts and, and what happens to those victims both before and after you know, payment. It's really interesting how when victims pay the ransom, that as you say, there are cases where the same cyber criminals might come back or even a different cyber criminal group using a different form of ransomware will come back and infect them again. Uh, because I suppose it just makes it obvious uh, that you know, the organization is an easy target. Uh, there are method ways that these groups communicate. And so you know, recovering from a ransomware attack is not uh, a fast process. So you know, by the time uh, you might have thought, okay, you know, we've got our network restored now, before you've looked at you know, maybe boosting your security, another attack group seemingly comes in and it's, it, it happens quite regularly. There are reports from, uh, uh, from all over the world where organizations which have fallen victim to ransomware and paid the ransom have fallen victim again, which I suppose ultimately shows you can't really trust cr well, criminals who you're dealing with here. So... Uh... I mean, I guess we shouldn't be very surprised where criminals who refuse to pay, you know, or, or sorry, who extort money from your company are, are not very moral, moral. But what we don't understand often is how much of a business model ransomware has become. There, there are groups all over the world, especially in the, in the kind of Russia and all Soviet bloc who are, who've created ransomware to become a complete business. And they are you know, building the technology, they're building a, a payment service in a sense. They're actually even have some, some, some of them have a help desk to help you with the paying the ransom. They have a big affiliate network and they constantly ask themselves, how do we 
apply more pressures on victims to, to, to pay up the ransom. For example, over the last couple of years, we're seeing a huge rise of what we coined as double extortion where not only will the ransomware groups encrypt on your files and lock them so that the victim is no longer able to access them, they will also, also exfiltrate key information and key data with the threat of sharing or publicizing this data globally, creating embarrassment, trouble with regulators, violation of erosion of trust and brand, and continuous, you know, even apply more financial and business damages on top of losing access to the file. This is all meant to, of course, apply more pressure on the victims to pay up, even if they did have a disaster recovery and backup in, in place at the time. Exactly. I mean, it's not unheard of for organizations who do have backups, as you say, to pay these ransoms, which you know, can cost millions of dollars because of that sensitive information that you know, will be leaked if they don't pay. I mean, that could relate to customers, uh, private contracts. And it just goes to show that you know, how sophisticated ransomware has become in terms of extorting victims. Uh, there's so many different ways now that they are cashing in on organizations that they infect uh, initially, be that you know, with uh, extortion attacks or coming back and attacking the same company again. Yeah, we have actually seen another uh, mechanism in which ransomware groups apply pressure, which is threatening them with the regulator. We've seen ransomware note as saying, if we publicize this data, you're in a GDPR violation, and that also carries fine and scrutiny from regulator. That's another way of applying pressure on the victims to, to pay up in a sense. So this is definitely a, a constantly evolving, very advanced business behind these ransomware groups. And, and you know, we should do we should change our posture and protect ourselves against these activities. That's an interesting point. There is you no know, GDPR fines can result in you know, millions, tens of millions of euros. And for some boardrooms, they might look at that and think, oh, maybe if we pay you know, a million or two million in a ransom, that's going to be less costly for us financially. But then you know, they they need to remember you know, they are dealing with criminals here and there's still things they need to do. And it's just... It just goes to show how complex uh, this world is and how uh, good, unfortunately, cyber criminals have got to, uh, what they're doing. You mentioned how they have help desks. That some, in some cases, it might be easier to deal with a cyber criminal or ransomware gang's uh, help desk than, than you know, dealing with your own help desk because these are, are such so professional in what they do. And it's just fascinating how these organizations have grown in just a few years, really, when, uh, you know, as, as mentioned, a few years ago, it was a few hundred dollars for photos. And now it's, as we've seen, uh, incidents like Colonial Pipeline, where you know, millions of dollars are handed over in ransoms because whole infrastructure is being affected by, by these uh, cyber attacks. Absolutely. The, the data is staggering. You know, 63% of businesses who are attacked end up reporting huge financial losses. 53% of those who are attacked report brand and reputation and customer trust erosion that have dramatic business outcome. We've, we've, we at Cyber Reason have been looking at these groups and looking at the victims. 32% of victims, unfortunately, result on either uh, losing leadership positions, C-level executives are, 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 are either dismissed or resign after a ransomware attack. 29% of companies end up resulting to layoffs and terminating jobs as, there, as a re response to the impact of ransomware attacks. So this is a huge problem. Uh, and, and again, ransomware authors are, are, are preying on victims' vulnerability here. So if an organization does become the unfortunate victim of a ransomware attack, what, what action should they take uh, rather than you know, paying the ransom to cyber criminals, which you know, just perpetuates this problem? How can they deal with the situation without uh, you know, funding uh, cyber criminals? I, I think we have to start before. I, I, I think the first thing we need to realize, ransomware is not a natural phenomenon. But technological solution from companies such as ourselves and Cyber Reason and some of our competitors are actually able to stop ransomware before damage is done and eliminate that from a, a board level crisis when we have to ask ourselves, do we pay millions to criminals or do we spend millions on recovery to a, a non-issue? A ransomware that doesn't detonate, a ransomware that's blocked before execution is just another day. There's nothing special about that day compared to the other day because it's been blocked before execution. I think the battle has to start here. 
Like we, we cannot, before we become victims, before our companies become victims to ransomware, they have to prepare and prevent themselves, protect themselves ahead of time. And, and that has to do first and foremost with how do we build a security program that is al aligned to the level of risk that ransomware creates right now? And first and foremost, let's, let's go to the basics. Cybersecurity hygiene, patch management, awareness training on our, of the employees, working on our systems to make sure that there's, there's a containment plan and a cybersecurity recovery plan in place before we ever in an unfortunate situation where ransomware attack. And they will deploy, and then become victims, or before they become victims, companies can deploy the right solutions, such as, again, such as the ones we've built at Cyber Reason, to protect and stop these ransomware from exploding. And that becomes a non-issue. Uh, right now, the bigger, biggest issue is the, the lack of preparation on companies. I've seen many companies who think that because they have a cyber insurance, for example, then they're safe. But we've seen again and again where even when cyber insurance companies end up paying, they are paying substantially less than the actual cost and impact and damage occur incurred by the ransomware attack. So the tone of you know, less than, 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 than half of the losses, 40% of companies report that the cyber, the cyber insurance did not cover all their losses out of the attack. So that's a, a big gap here, even when you do have insurance that needs to be addressed. It seems to be a, co a constant presence in this discussion that uh, investing in security and protecting your network before you fall victim to a ransomware attack is going to be less expensive than fixing it after a ransomware attack has become a problem. And we've seen many instances, uh, including the, some of the more recent high profile cases where it's, it's simple things which have allowed uh, uh, ransomware gangs to infiltrate these networks, things like password reuse, lack of patch management, no two-factor authentication. And it, there's little things like this, which, uh, hopefully organizations should be thinking of more now especially uh, considering uh, 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 the amount of uh, ransomware incidents uh, we, we've had this year and in fact the fact we've had you know uh, uh, the white house uh, talking about ransomware in these last few months because it's such a big problem and hopefully it, that might uh, finally enable or, or pr persuade some boards that this is a problem that needs looking into Absolutely. I was thrilled to see the, the White House taking over ransomware as a, as a political and state level problem versus a justice or a fend for yourself situation. We've seen ransomware evolve and, and blessedly the, the, the political layer is becoming aware that this is something that we need to address as a, as a, you know, as nations and not just at the individual level. This is no longer a question of can justice department persecute criminals. This is a question of can geopolitical situation change to the point where co countries across the world rein in ransomware groups operating in their environment. And this is a, I was thrilled to see the Putin and, the, and Biden discussions putting ransomware on the table as an issue that needs to be discussed at that level. This is, this is a great development, but still today, again, at the end of the day, the reality is that groups such as Our Evil are announcing to the world, not only are we not stopping, we're going after big companies in the, in, 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 you know, and everybody's fair game, whether it's a, a critical infrastructure, a hospital, or any other kind of business, they are fair game for uh, you know, groups such as Our Evil and other in that area. So to sum up here, I mean, what, what are some of the sort of key things that organizations can do in order to make sure they're not the next high profile victim of a ransomware attack? And we're not sitting here in uh, two, three months down the line talking about you know, their company being the, the next big victim who's paid millions in a ransom to, to, to Revo or other cyber criminal groups. So I'm very, I'm very optimistic. I think in general, key executive in companies are more and more looking at their cybersecurity team and realizing this team is a core part of my company's survival and risk management posture. This is a huge development. And in that case, we need to continue that trend. Cybersecurity groups within companies need to push forward with what is the best practice on hygiene. We talked about patching, talked about multi-factor authentication, talked about disaster recovery plan and segmentation. All of these things on their own, but more importantly together, represent a huge step forward. And then naturally, stop relying on antiquated technologies and apply advanced modern endpoint centric technologies that go and solve ransomware before it becomes an issue. At the end of the day, we can absolutely stop ransomware right now, eliminate the problem, 
and protect, protect ourselves. We just needed to have the, the desire and tenacity to go forward and apply these technologies to, to the right solution. Well, hopefully that's going to be the case. And maybe this is a chat has persuaded someone watching that they, they finally need to take notice, uh, hopefully. Well, thanks for joining me on ZDNet Security Update, Jonathan. And for more information on how to protect your organization from ransomware and other cyber attacks, be sure to uh, like ZDNet's YouTube channel. And of course, there's plenty of news and features about cybersecurity on ZDNet.com. Thanks for watching. Thank you.